welcome back. In this video, we are covering the topic about springs in dynamic simulation. So, for a start, these springs are not created by modeling. This is a feature from the software itself that helps us to have um, accurate and uh, nice uh, representation of a spring in our simulations. So how do we get them on our model? Okay, so first of all, as I said, you are not going to model the spring. You're going to have points or cylindrical faces that are available for you to pick. And of course, uh, a flat surface. That's the only uh, two conditions that you need to have in order to include them. The other thing could be, and I think it is important, uh, you need to set up some degrees of freedom in order to make this thing to happen on a, an easy, easier way. Easier way. Okay, so that being said, let me uh, enter to modify this spring. So when you uh, need the spring, you go to insert joints and click on the spring damper jack. All right, so in there, you need to pick two points. So points are usually present in this kind of intersection in between uh, flats and cylinders. So I will select this one, for example, and let's say that I'm going to pick this other one or make something different, right? So I will click OK. And once it is created, the program is going to show you something that may not exactly uh, be accurate, right? And well, at, at this moment, the program is uh, making the spring as a suppressed uh, feature, but uh, I can unsuppress it and it is there so this is not going to make much sense so <laughs> let's go to properties of that spring okay so now i need to add uh, the values that we know for springs this is more related with physics but the constant uh, value for the force per millimeter of compression okay then uh, you need to set the distance of the spring when it is uh, free, when it has no load applied. And finally, some damping, if you want to specify the damping, if you have enough information for calculated, that's great. Okay, so the problem is it identifying that the free distance right now is 440 for this spring. Um, so I could uh, modify it by hand. So at the moment when I'm uh, running the simulation, spring is going to act trying to, to get into the free length position as springs do, right? Okay. In this drop down menu, you're going to have different options because not everything should be a springs. It could be uh, a spring, it could be a spiral spring, could be a spring damper, uh, could be a damper by itself, and we have the option for a jack. Okay, so uh, let me get back into the spiral spring. And uh, this is more a graphic thing. The, the following things are more graphical more than something that is, is really important or that is something that is going to make a, an improvement or change the, um, the results. This is just for uh, a nice looking, right? So let's say I will put these values in. So this is not going to modify any of these values uh, in terms of the forces, right? So this is the section that is important for the forces. And then this is just for make it look uh, good. All right. Okay, let me click on cancel and I will delete this spring. And let's take a look 
to the values for this one, for example. So I go to properties or well, properties, or you can double click it after it is created. You can just double click it. Okay, so actually this spring is just for one Newton per millimeter. The free length is uh, 70 millimeters and is having a very small damping value. And as I said, all these values are just to make it look uh, right with the model, right? So let's run this. So as you can see, the setup is done for let the sphere to roll. If you want to see how I did this setup, I leave uh, another uh, video in the description so you can go and check it out. All right, so that, that was for just one millimeter, um, one Newton per millimeter. So let's make this a little bit more aggressive. Let's use two Newtons per millimeter, which uh, of course the software is not, in this module, it is not capable to say no, there is no spring that is impossible, uh, that is possible, that is capable to make that force. No, the program doesn't matter. The program, what is important is the force that you want to apply on the spring itself. Okay. And well, the, the, the forces that the spring can provide as well. Okay. So let's click on OK. So this is going to be, yeah, it's taking some interesting thing. Now, let me take a look. This one is still on one. Let's make this one weaker, 0 0.2. So it is going to be compressing more, I hope. Uh, let's uh, modify this one to something more aggressive. Let's say four. Now let's click run. Whoa. <laughs> oh, all right. That was not expected. Okay, so maybe this one is too weak. So let's use um, 0 0.8. I think it's going to be fine. So as you can see, you, you can just play around with this and make uh, your model even more accurate than, than ever before using these springs that is a quick way uh, to get results. And of course, those ones are going to be uh, having some uh, data on your um, output grapher, which is, is, is also great. So I have here the two forces uh, that I believe is what, what here matters, to be honest. Let's, let's take a look how it will look. There we go. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like it, please don't forget to leave the like and subscribe. Thank you.